Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll be showing you a stealing creation guide. Now I know I'm doing a flipping series, but I actually did promise to do guides in between. Surprisingly though, it's been requested multiple times. Anyways, I'm gonna get into the basics, then the strategy, and finally the rewards. There are no requirements for this, although having higher gathering skill stats really does help here. So it's located in the gamer's grotto, in the northwest section. Just use your game's necklace to teleport there, or the Falador Lodestone, then run east to enter the cave. Anyways, I'm gonna explain to you how to start this game. So the FC for this is called Fast SC. Just join them and announce to form a team there. It may take a while to find players sometimes, as this game isn't very lively compared to the past. So you're gonna bank everything in a deposit box, then climb over the large pen to the right, which is the clan stealing creation waiting area. So there are a minimum of 10 players required to start a game, which means 2 teams and 5 players on each team. So once 10 players in the FC all agree to play, just go to the waiting area if you haven't done so already. Usually there are people just doing their own activities at first, you know, because they don't want to XP waste of all the waiting time. Anyways, once you're all in the pen, the ranks in the FC will tell you which alternative FC to go to. The anti means the opposite team's FC. It really doesn't matter which FC you go to. Now technically two friend chats are supposed to face off against one another. The fast SC is mainly for recruiting players to play. Anyways, once the FC has 5 players in the game, then the FC leaders will declare a battle against each other. I would also highly suggest you disable the player attack option in the combat settings, as this is a non-combat FC. So here's the strategy. You're going to be asked to rejoin fast SC, because they do make all kinds of calls for locations. So the main interactive scenery are the resource plots over the map. The requirements to gather them are based on the tier and the respective skill. So here are the requirements table. For the fragments, they're tier 1, which have no level requirement. Then the tier 2 requires level 20, tier 3 level 40, tier 4 level 60, and finally tier 5 level 80. So anyways, you're going to prioritize the tier 5 resource location, which will give you the most points per game. So yeah, I would honestly try to call a tier 5 clay location once you find it, although it isn't too hard to find anyways. Usually though, you're just going to follow an entire group of players. As you'll notice, handpicking the clay takes up a lot of time, right? Well, when you receive one piece of clay, just go to the creation kiln immediately. Now you're just going to create a tool that's corresponded to the gathering resource node. In my case, they're butterfly swarms, so I'm going to create a butterfly net. Anyways, you're going to go back to the resource plot and just keep depleting it basically. Ideally, if you're the first player to make a tier 5 tool, then try to like give clay to other players. I mean, it's just one piece of clay and it makes games a lot faster. And like I said, it takes a lot of tries to handpick one single piece of tier 5 clay. After another full inventory of clay, just create a sacred clay summoning pouch as well as clay deposit scrolls. Now make sure you do have the summoning level requirement first. If not though, just make a full stack of runes or arrows. It really doesn't matter which items you make as they all have the same point value. The only real difference between the point values is the tier level of the clay. So the reason why you want to make those items as I listed is because they're stackable. Just so you know, you can actually surge in stealing creation, which can make it a little bit faster to go to the creation kiln. After you deplete the tier 5, just move on to the tier 4, then the tier 3, and the tier 2, and finally gather all the tier 1 fragments. Now if the remaining skilling plots are different than the tier 5 you originally gathered from, then just make sure you create the respective tool for that, well except for the fragments though. This basically allows you to gather clay at an optimal speed. Luckily though, in my case, it's still tier 4 swarms, so there's no need for a new tool. Pretty much the main strategy is just deplete all the plots as fast as possible. If you're using a stealing creation familiar, then the give beast the burden option really helps save the amount of trips to the kiln. Now you do not want to attack other players, because you will definitely get kicked or banned from the FC, as this is meant to be a non-combat game. So once all the plots are depleted, there's one minute until the entire game ends. Make sure you quickly process your remaining clay and then deposit everything before the timer expires. If you don't want to walk to your base and deposit them, then just use the clay deposit scroll which should deposit all the items in your familiar's inventory. Now the reason why you want to deposit them is because, well, it rewards significantly more points. Usually though, the game should last 11 minutes in total, which means 10 minutes to deplete all the resources. Pretty much just jump over the large pen again and go to your assigned FCs to start the team again. Now also, quickly remember your assigned FC so that way it makes the game starting a lot faster. Yeah I know I explained a lot about the strategy but it's relatively simple although it does take a while to get used to at first. So I'm going to be explaining the point system and the rewards. 
Now here's the rewards table based on how many points you earn in a game. This is basically the stealing creation minigame points to reward points. So the winning team will get 10% bonus points in a game when calculating the overall score. By winning team, it means the team that gathers the most resources. Although it doesn't really make a difference though, with the rewards, you're going to talk to the rewards mystic and then it will open up the rewards shop. Now there are a couple of rewards to choose from but I'm going to be explaining the main ones. Starting with the fletching and crafting outfit, it's really the only reward that Iron Man can purchase. Now this costs you 100 points per outfit piece. After that we have the volatile tools for bonus XP in a respective skill. Now the bonus XP is not level scaled so it's always set to be the same. There are several skills to choose from. Although the volatile tools are random in one of seven skills. If you're not satisfied with the skill tool that you got, then you can always revert it back and then morph it again, but then you'll lose 10% of your original XP. The cool thing about this instead is that you can actually recharge it, so that way you can just keep your tool in your bank for optimal bonus XP, especially if you're planning to play stealing creation a lot. So in conclusion, you should average around 23 or 24 points in a game with tier 80 plus stats. I think it's possible to reach 25 points, but like it requires a lot of luck. The game should last 11 minutes like I said, and at 23 points per game, you should average around 184k bonus XP per hour in various skills. That means it will take around 5 hours to get the full set for each the fletching and the crafting outfit. Just so you know, none of this is accounting for the wait time between games. So is stealing creation worth it as a whole? I mean to be honest, it's not really worth it, because the skills are faster elsewhere. It's also sometimes hard to find a team, although usually spotlight there's more players. Overall though, it's really subject to personal opinion, although at lower levels, for certain skills, it may actually be worth it. For mining bonus XP, please do Barbarian Assault because it's really really amazing, but yeah I do have a full guide link and I'll leave that link in the description. Now the last thing I'll talk about is using alts, and a lot of people might ask me for this, but I would highly suggest you don't do it because it counts as rigging minigame results. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask.